I'm Mark Hanlon, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Now that the tank location and mixing station location were chosen, it was time to think about tank size. Now the tank was going to sit on a 24 foot long wall, which meant that it had plenty of room for a 12 foot long tank. Given that this was going to be the boss's dream build, I knew I better make that tank 12 feet long. Because here's the thing about tank sizes. I've yet to build a tank and someone looks at it and goes, it's too big. That just never happens, ever. It just doesn't, it does not happen. Therefore, 12 feet long was our length. Now, some of you might be saying, well, wait, you could go longer. I could have gone longer. However, I had to leave room for a little something, something that I can't talk about just yet. Now that the length of the tank was determined, it was on to width and height. The difference between a 30 inch wide tank and a 36 inch wide tank is night and day. We had over 10 feet of width to work with, so that meant plenty of room for a 36 inch wide tank. Could we have gone 48 inches wide? We could have, but we wanted to keep the lobby as open as possible, so we went with 36 inches wide. Okay, so now what about tank height? Look, 24 inches, 30 inches, 36 inches tall, 48 inches tall. Here's the thing about tank height. Unless you have a really short tank, like 16 inches tall, on a really short stand, like a 30 inch tall stand, you're gonna have to get on some kind of step stool to get in to do anything in the tank. Now I'm talking fragging corals, placing corals, something more than just tossing food in to feed your fish. Therefore, if you're getting on a step stool anyway, who cares if you go one step, or two steps, or three steps? Either way, you're having to get on a step stool. 24 inches tall tanks, they just look too short for me, especially when they get to be 12 feet long. They look like these long slits in the wall, which just isn't my taste. Now, 30 inches is kind of my de facto limit for tanks because it's free real estate, might as well go up as high as you can. However, once you get into 36 inches tall, do anything useful on the bottom of the tank, like placing frags, you're gonna to have to take your shirt off and get all your arm wet, probably up to your chest. Now, if you're just placing some big LPS colony, that's a gross motor movement. You can grab some tongs and put them in there. But if you want to do anything really useful in your tank, on 36 inches tall, you're going to be getting wet. And 48 inches tall, look, you're just going to be getting in that tank. And while that sounds fun, it's really not. It's just, I've been there, I've done that a lot for clients. It's cool once, and then you're over. 144 inches, which is 12 feet long, times 36 inches, which is three feet wide, and 30 inches tall comes out to about 673 gallons. You know what, for naming purposes, 700 gallons is a lot catchier and easier. So we'll dub this build the saltwateraquarium.com 700. Would the saltwateraquarium.com 700 get low iron glass? The answer to that is a big fat no, and here's why. I'm of the opinion that low iron glass tanks aren't worth it. Once the tank is full, you can't look at it and go, that's a low iron glass tank. And even if you could, it's not like your fish are gonna look that much better or your corals are gonna look that much better because it's low iron glass. Now look, if you want all the bells and whistles, I get it, nothing wrong with that. I'm building a low iron glass tank for a client now. We talked about it, he still wanted it. Fine, knock yourself out, I'll get it for you. So if you like low iron because you like all the bells and whistles, you like saying that you have a low iron tank, look, I get it, go for it. Nothing wrong with that. But if you're thinking you're gonna get a low iron glass and then everything's gonna look better in the tank, don't waste your time and money. While most hobbyists are concerned about the glass in their tanks, I'm more concerned about how the tank is made, specifically the bottom of the tank. I don't wanna lose any sleep at night wondering about is this tank in a brink or is the bottom of the tank in a shatter because it's made out of glass. Therefore, I build my tanks out of a one inch thick piece of PVC. It's a one inch thick slab of PVC. It's virtually indestructible. It's not going to break. It's not going to shatter. It's strong as it gets. Therefore, I know that I can build this tank, whatever tank it is, including my own step down tank, know that that thing's going to hold and not be concerned about its construction as well. Therefore, the Saltwater Aquarium 700 got a one inch thick PVC bottom. With 700 gallons of water in the tank, how was I going to get the water out of the tank? Well, with an overflow, of course and to keep as much viewable space in the tank as possible, I went with an external overflow. Now this is a custom overflow that I designed as it needs to have plenty of capacity to move a lot of water through it if I need to. That means two two inch drain lines and another drain line to act as an emergency overflow. A little backup never hurts. 
With the tank size determined, I called Planet Aquariums and got the tank on order. Planet Aquariums has a long history of building reliable tanks, and I trust them not only for my clients' tanks, but also for my personal tanks. They're the ones who did my 12-foot drop-down tank. With the tank on order, it was time to narrow down the filtration for the saltwateraquarium.com 700. And that goes back to that little tidbit that I threw on at the top of the episode. See, I had to leave space for a little something else in the lobby, but I can't talk about that just yet, because I'm going to talk about that in the next episode. I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in that next episode and talk to you about that filtration cliffhanger that I'm going to leave right now. <laughs>